Oh, hey guys, hey. So I down selected a donor board for the CPS to uh, Darksoft kit. So I'm gonna go with the uh, Marvel versus Capcom, the revision four board. The only difference using a, 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 a version four board is I will have to solder directly on the CN2 for my chips, chip select lines. So that's not a big deal. I'm just gonna solder here. I chose this board because I th I think it's the best one out of the bunch actually. The one board has major major corrosion problems. I think it's fixable, but I, I, I didn't wanna do like a repair just to get this uh, mod kit going. So this looks pretty free of damage. It's pretty clean. There There is a jumper on the back. Um, it's from the J9 PAL chip up to, I believe, uh, yep, into, it's a Data IO 9. What is that? It's a input, input 9 from here. So I'm just going to hope that that was just like a bad solder job and they just decided to jump it. But other than that jumper, that's the only thing I see wrong on this board. Okay, so prepping the board for the Dark Soft kit. And, um, we're gonna use the program ROM section for the main CPU. The, I think a smaller, I have to look at the direction, a smaller CPU board goes here, I think. And then maybe doesn't use these. I have to check for sure. But that's one of the first steps is pull the program ROMs, mask ROMs, and your sound ROMs. And these guys. Um, I can't remember what those guys are, but we'll, we're going to pull these. I always like to organize my chips nicely when I can. Sometimes they're just all over the place, but sometimes, yeah, I know I'm using a big screwdriver, but I just like to just, even with the big screwdriver, just kind of get up there, just kind of tw twist right and left. I would have got on this side, but there's like a capacitor here. This is my normal size one. But for these bigger ones, these 32 bit EPROMs and mask ROMs were pretty big. So, so far, so good. And let's, let's continue. I'm just gonna, and now that I'm pulling these out, I see something. Well, I see that um, they are dual wipe, they are dual wipe sockets, but they're not, they're not the cleanest. They're not, they're not bad. Hang on, I'm gonna do this. We're gonna zoom up on these socket pins. Yep, just slowly, slowly get under there, just twist it, and then they typically pop right out without bending any legs. Um, I'm seeing, okay, I'll keep these in the right orientation. Okay, these are the sound ROMs. I think they call them like Q1 or Q2. I think that guy. I like, I like my small one because it really... I can I don't have I don't have to lift the chip as far. I'm gonna really just pop them out with this guy. This is a weird one. They got like a sticker. They have a sticker over the factory sticker, so I hope I don't know. We're gonna come back to these. I'm probably gonna come back and, and check those out later. Alright. Get get this chip out. Boop. Alright. Good to go. So Okay, zoom in on here. Zoom in on here. Let me grab my pointer. So you can see they're not the shiniest legs in the world, but I do believe that's just, um, I don't know how bad corrosion it is. So I am going to wash this board because with my brush, I can get down and kind of clear some of that out. These mask ROMs don't look, sockets don't look too bad. Not too bad. They are dual wipe. You see they're black. See there's a lot of dust down there underneath where the where the EEPROM was. So I think I'm gonna I think I'm just gonna take this out to the sink. I'm gonna scrub these. I got a nice brush that kind of gets down in there. Clean those up and then we'll we'll go for the um man, what is that? It looks like a oh it's a spider. Look at that thing. It's like an alien from aliens, like a little tiny one. Okay, 
So that's going to be it for here. We're going to go wash this thing. We'll come back and start populating it with the Dark Soft kit. Okay. Okay. Hey, guys. So we're back on the bench. I think we left off on the last video where um, I down-selected the board. So I'm down to using a Dash 4 board, which does not have the, uh, the jumpers for your chip selects. So we're gonna have to do some soldering here, but okay, let's let's get to it. Um, let's open up the Darksoft CPS2 Multi Game Version 2 kit. So this is the most current, the, the most current software, the most current release of the CPS2 kit, and it comes from Darksoft. And I purchased this through High Score Saves, and it cost me it cost about five hundred and ninety nine dollars. It's not cheap. So that's why we take our time during installation. So, but what it allows you to do, it allows you to play all the 42 released CPS2 games. And let's talk about the upgrades from the previous version. Um, this is my first experience with this, but I do know from the research. Okay, so with the previous version, you had to actually do some soldering on your PAL chip. Uh, that is no longer mandatory. You had to configure your jumpers uh, properly so we don't have to worry about jumpers configuration and there is no more soldering on your PAL chip, which is great. So it's going to make installation easier, but functionality I think is the same. I don't think anything's changed there. I do, oh, well, I guess uh, let's talk about key writing because it took me a second to really understand about what the encryption key writing is and how it works with the with the dark soft kit so we have to go back kind of and talk about the history of cps so the cps2 system was released started development in 1990 was released officially in 1993 and um, it came out as the cps2 system so capcom they had bootlegging issues with the CPS-1 system. So they added an encryption, a 64-bit encryption. There's a name for the encryption, but I'm not even going to try. Um, there's an algorithm encryption that came on the CPS-2. So during its life from, I think it was almost 10 years, I think from 1993 to 2002, somewhere in there, this these games were never bootlegged and it oh maybe it was in 2002 where the encryption somebody figured out the encryption but during the the the, show, the the active life of this system it was never decrypted so so now in 2002 it was finally dec decrypted somebody figured out the algorithm and people were able to play their games again if if it suicided by uh, burning new program ROMs. They were burning new program ROMs with, 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 the, um, with, the, with the keys, encryption keys already in it, phoenixed. So that's where the term phoenix comes from. Program ROMs with an additional encryption. So, kind of moving on from that. Now, the keys have been figured out and like what this dark soft system does it allows each each game to flash drive its own encryption key if that makes sense so you are pretty much playing the game any of the cps2 games on original hardware minus minus the board original hardware from your your, the, your processor your main processor here all the decoding, all the decoding and processing on the A board, everything's original. And from what I was reading on arcade projects, that the emulation is so good, Twin Galaxies actually allows it for high score competitions. So that's really cool. That's that's a really close emulation. If this is, the, if it's validated enough um, that it can be used for high score, high score. Um, championship or high score records that's pretty close i think i got off track okay the encryption so decrypted are are burn burn program roms 
that have the keys installed um, unencrypted are the, the original main files that require the external uh, CMOS encryption. So I kind of I I kind of put the I think I put the horse in front of, or the cart in front of the horse with the whole suicide thing. So these keys, when this board was designed uh, in 1990, there's a CMOS battery, uh, 3.6 volts that kept your encryption key alive in the CMOS RAM, and if that would drop below two volts, it would it would wipe your encryption key, render the game useless. So even the processors encrypted, the program ROMs were encrypted. So when these things suicided back at, at the time, nobody could copy or bootleg or bring these things back to life. So it's all about their encryption. It worked very good between the battery and their encryption algorithm. It kept their it kept their software secure for over 10 years, which is, you know, you think about, you know, software security, 10 years is a long run for nobody to go back and, and decode it or hack it or emulate it or whatever. So, um, I am not a big fan. I, and Capcom, talking about Capcom as a video game company, they were awesome. They, they made some of the greatest uh, biggest earning games out there, uh, the Street Fighter, the Capcom, the Capcom versus Marvel, the Vampire Slayer, um, Me Mech Warriors. It's not called Mech Warriors. There's another. I think I got the. I got. I think I got a list of games. Um, uh, the Dungeons and Dragons, Tower of Doom. Ah, one of my favorites, Alien versus Predator. So there's pretty awesome games on here. It's pretty salty. Six hundred dollars, but each game cartridge, each each B board can run easily two to three hundred dollars working. Uh, Phoenix or original. So um, Mega Man. Uh, there's just a lot of games. Like my ultimate goal, not goal. I have a cabinet at home at our other location. I have a NBA Jam four player cabinet that somebody converted to CPS two. So I'm going to put this in that cabinet and, and pretty up that cabinet, probably change the control panel. But, um, you know, this is Arcade Laboratories. This is like the heartbeat of the game. So um, there's a little history of the technology. I know it was kind of fast and all over the place. And, you know, people regurgitate the same thing online, other videos. But there's, there's not a whole lot of other ways to say um, what it is. And where it is now and and you know thank you to all the people who worked on this people way smarter than me um, that makes this possible so we can continue to work on these games because like I said you know prior prior to Phoenix games somebody figuring out that encryption the, the hardware the a board the B board they were junk you couldn't use them at all but now we can use them again okay so enough of me talking um let's go inside the box here this is i think i i don't know if i opened it up with you let's call this um let's do the opening together so this is the box you get dark soft cps2 multi-game version 2. okay i kind of covered a little bit the differences um between the old version and the new version so your cps2 kit from dark soft is going to come with they're calling this guy the main board. So this is a main board that's going to sit in your, that's going to sit in the area where your program ROMs are. And I, I think, I don't know what they call this board. I'm going to call it the processing board. They call this the main board, but I think this is their, their processing board. And it will socket into, what's that called? CN, what's that? CN5 and CN6. I think these guys are, um, I the, these CN5 and CN6 are used when some, some of these games have a daughter board. So they interface probably with the mask RAM and the processors. So instead of that, we're going to, this comes instead. So let's, let's zoom in a little bit on this. Um, you know, I was a test technician. I'm not an engineer like back for my day job, but I do know... Some cool things to point out, um, some hardware design stuff. See how these are set at the 45? 
So uh, design speaking, design wise, propagation wise and stuff like that, um, laying chips out at a 45 is, is excellent for uh, speed, speed propagation. Um, and it just has a lot of properties. I think even cooling, processing speed, access times. So those are not on there just to look pretty. Those are on there because somebody really smart designed this board. Uh, we would see a lot more stuff designed like this in consumer electronics and in aerospace if we had the space. You know, everything gets so tight. But when you put it at a 45, you see you lose a lot of component space. But electrical um, properties are very good for that. Um, I didn't. I took a look at some of the chip numbers. I don't recognize them. If somebody wants to know more about the chips, the logic chips and the processors, they can. You can leave a, a message below, and I'm more than happy to go and research these and kind of tell you what they do. Okay, so let's flip it around to the back. Okay, so on the back, same thing. We have some more processors, some logic decoders, and that's about it. The board looks really quality. It looks smartly designed. Has a has a QC past sticker, so they're actually um, doing some quality control, which is great. So that's, you know, characteristic, characteristics of the board. The, the connector port's look good. Because this is Arcade Laboratories, I am a teacher, so I do have to talk about, you know, handling. When you handle these boards, you know, try to hold from the edges. Even a thumb on these IC legs will bend them. So be very careful when you're handling these. Um, same thing, uh, when you inspect them, like we're getting ready to connect and mate everything up and uh, don't take for granted anything is good, even brand new, it could be like stuff up in the sockets. So let's go ahead and just kind of give it a good, I'm going to give it a good, uh, just a visual, make sure no um, ESD foam is stuck up in there. I've already inspected it, but it's, it's, it's a good idea when you're working with these small parts, just to have a look, make sure no, no legs got shoved together. Make sure there's no FOD. Um, and then kind of, we already talked about the pins. You know, always look at your connectors, your pins to make sure they're all straight, that they're not bent. Even new stuff, I don't care, even new stuff. That connector looks okay, thems look okay. I don't see anything wrong with this guy. Anyway, processor board. Ah, okay, so let's talk about what they're calling the uh, the main board. I think they're calling it the main board. That makes sense because this guy goes where the program, the program banks are. So you have banks here that are uh, switched bank. I think, let's see, I can't remember... Uh, maybe I'm thinking, I, I, they're in two somehow. I don't know if they're these two. These two are like one bank and one bank are switchable. But if we come back here to our main board and check out the pinouts, we can see that um, pin, that's going to be pin, dun, 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 pin one and two. So it looks like they're using like an input side, an output side, and in the in the in on the chips in between, they're use the power and chip select. So you have you have chip select for each for each ROM. So that's kind of cool. You can kind of look at it like that. Um cuz I'm guessing when the ROMs when the ROMs from the SD card flash into here, it decodes into the the proper address ranges. Um, yeah, so it's pretty slick actually. I do see a little gunk on there? I don't know. Uh, you know, there are some those guys. Yep, yeah, they left some flux on here. Not no criticism, but those 
there is some, you know, they did not clean those very good. Gosh darn it. I want to clean that now before I install it. Because <laughs> eventually that flux. Here, see if you can zoom in. Um, zoom in real close and see if you can see the, um, like, the. it looks like glue. But that's flux residue, and after time, that will corrode. Um, I know there's non-corrosive flux and this, that, and the other, but they soldered it, but they didn't, they didn't clean it all too good. That's okay. Um, I'll clean it later. So these look like the gold-plated pins, I believe so. So their pins are gold-plated. So anyway, there's your main board for your program your program software program banks okay uh, comes with an extender card I call it an extender it's actually a jumper card but it's going to, going to join the main board and the processor board together so same deal why, why we got that out I'm just gonna give it a quick look I mean it's always good I mean there's a piece of crap right there there's a piece of crap in there okay okay Kit comes with a, I haven't had this guy out, LCD control screen. So how to change between the games. Comes with a control, uh, control screen, has micro switches. Yeah, these are, these are up and down. So I think they're, you can push and up and down. We'll see, we'll see how the, we'll see how the menu works with, with those guys when the time comes. Yep, same deal. Flux, flux. I wish I would have saw that sooner. I would have cleaned it before this video. Okay, um, comes with two standoffs, which are for the processor board, and it comes with um, a cable for the processor board to your LCD control. This is the extended one I bought. I bought this guy. I did not buy um, the cable going back to the encryption this 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 will allow you to run original encrypted roms but you have to have jumpers and we'll get to that when we get to that i did not buy the cable because the cable is like 20 bucks and today i i went out and i bought two sets of ribbon cables for literally like a dollar fifty and i'm going to use four four conductors off of it versus twenty dollars so, but we will check these because you know, you know, you know me and my trust issues. And also I got a, it's a case for, um, got a case, protection case for the LCD screen. Okay. All right. Enough of that. You're like, let's see some work, damn it. All right. So let's, let's go to work here. Let's start assembling. Last video I was blah, blah, blah. I was talking, took out. Program ROMs, all the mask ROMs, the two sound ROMs, gone. And since then, I kind of inspected this again. I actually went back and verified this jumper. There's some documentation online that um, talks about some pinouts. And that jumper is a pinout to there. So hopefully there's no other board problem with this board. Okay, so let's get our, let's get our processor board first. Ah, and you know what, guys? Don't forget to look. It comes with a T20 Torx. I didn't see it. I ordered I ordered a set right here. I ordered my own set because I didn't think I had a set. And I've had this I've had this box sitting in my lab forever for at least three weeks. And I didn't even notice that that was um, a Torx set. I thought it was a standoff. Maybe a suggestion is uh, you guys. If you pack it, put the torque set up so people know it's in there. Okay, so let's get these standoffs on here. The standoffs are going to create um, support for when we're seated. So when the board is seated, it's not going to have... Okay, so I already inspected these. I'm going to look at those, those guys. They look pretty good. So... Let's let's get him mated. So same thing. Like I told my 
like I told the, my students in class, you know, when we do this kind of work, you know, it's all about feel. And even experienced technicians can mess things up. So it's all about feel, you know, when you when you push and you seat things, if they have guide pins, recognize what your guide pins are, recognize what kind of connector. Okay, I felt that one start to seat. There we go. So let's just take this down whoop, a little at a time, a little at a time. All right, whoop. All right there we go. Fully seated fully seated and you know just double check kind of look at gaps actually look at those gaps I don't think it's fully seated there we go look at that gap yo yo there we go look at your gap okay now it's seated okay so you can see we had now what's going on here Okay. Okay, now you can see what the standoffs are for. Okay. Step two. There are instructions. Um, maybe I'll throw them up in the corner when we actually, when I edit the video. But I've been through them, so the next step, we're going to go ahead and seat our main board into our program ROM area. Same thing, alignment. It's nighttime here in sunny Thailand. Not so sunny right now. Like if I work in the day out here, I get blinded. And I got some pretty good light. Oh, I know what I did, you guys. When we left off, I took the board out and washed it, looking to get um, these sockets a little bit more clean. Um, they, cl they cleaned up a little bit. They're not super shiny, but I, I do think... I do think they are cleaner and kind of looking at those sockets um, they're not horrible they are they are darkened a bit but it appears that the the swipe tense the swipe strength is still okay there's no they're not stretched out or gapped not crazy so I'm gonna roll with this because I really don't want to change the sockets on this board this is a multi-layer board I can do it, but I just don't want to. Just too much risk. Okay, so let me get where I can see this guy. All right. And I think I'm one off. There we go. All right. So I'm just gonna make sure that all the pins are lined up. Yeah, just never assume that things you buy, like pins are straight. Well, those are pretty straight. Let's let's start. Yep, good. All right, let's get him. Wait, let me get it down. There we go. So we've got an input and output and all the chip selects there. All right. Oh, oh, I think I think we're in. No. No, we're not. Yep, just look at, just keep an eye on your work. Keep an eye on your work. You can see this, these banks are not in. There we go. There we go. And then the middle one. Now we're down. Yep, just be careful where you push and how you're handling the board. I try to be very, just very careful. It just comes from my experience in aerospace. Handling boards, um, yeah, you end up in the boss's office. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, okay, so we have our extender, and what they've done, they didn't say this in the instructions, but again, recognizing your key, you got a key here, we have a key on this connector, and then in the instructions for this board, they show a different symbol here. Um and I'll show you, I might actually flip you around and show you, but it says arrow up or symbol. The instructions show a different symbol, but you can only put this in one way because each connector has a key. There's only one key, so can't really do much there. So just make sure 
the one with the socket is definitely good. And let's just make sure that that is going to line up well. Okay. I think we're going to line up just fine, guys. Nope. It was in and out. So there might there might be a little just a little bit of um, binding because this board is not completely tightened down. All right, there we go. But I'm not believing. Yep. So that one is. There's no legs or, or nothing for this this board to. There we go. I'm gonna have to be careful with that, guys. Yeah. So you can also just check your, you know, just check your spacing. Looks even all the way across the top. The key pretty much bottomed out. I think I can probably push on it and get just a fuzz more, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna leave it right there. I'm gonna look look down over top of it, make sure it's somewhat flat. I ain't gonna mess with that. Okay. Okay, so now, now the fun part. I hope I actually these wires are long enough. So let's go to the instructions. I, I want I want to I want to know exactly what I'm talking about here. Or I wanna tell I wanna tell you properly. Oh, those are the old instructions. So this is what I'm talking about on the previous boards. On the previous board, you had to set all your jumpers properly. The new board, you don't have to do that. So just for, this is for my research, but I'm not going to confuse you guys. You don't have to worry about jumpers on the new board. Okay, here's the current installation guide. It's the JST, the JST connector. And I believe that is, uh, what is the, the JST, what does it stand for? Okay, we'll come back. I'll, um, we'll just kind of go through that little, little bit. Okay, but here's our pinouts. We have to go uh, JST pin two, three, four, and five over to CN. 29, 30, 31, 32. So let's, um, I did not buy their $20 connector. Already, that should be free if you pay 600 bucks for a board like this, because these are just pennies. Not a, not a complaint, you know, I, I know people gotta make money and it's not a complaint, but if you have other means to be resourceful, save yourself some money. Okay, so what did I do here? I am going to take, we're gonna go with the same color code here. Orange, what's I got? Orange, blue, brown, red. Green and orange, I don't look green. <laughs> okay, I guess it is. White, brown, green, and orange. White, brown, green, and orange. Okay, very good. So there we go, there's our, there's our wire. Actually, here's our wire, white. Brown, green, and orange, and I hope, you know, and I'm probably gonna have to cut here, guys, because I'm gonna have to cut here because my these wires are not long enough. Gosh darn it. All right, so let me modify my jumper wires. I'm still gonna make my own cable. I'm still gonna make my own cable. So we've gotta jump, we gotta make a cable from this connector from this connector and it's got to come around to this is CN2 this is A32 so we have to go here 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 and here okay fair enough so let me cut here I'm going to build these cables out and route them and then we'll be right back okay thanks guys Okay guys, so hey, we're back. So we left off um, with the with the connector here. Um, 
forget already what they call it. But this this is the connection that's going to allow you to flash encrypted ROMs. Without this cable, you could run Phoenixed ROMs, but not encrypted. So um, I did not have the connector. I didn't get the connector. So I just went ahead and soldered. I just went ahead and soldered my wires and then soldered them to the appropriate place on the CN2. It's the CN2 connector, pin 31, 30, 29, 28. So, um, got that done. So let's let's go over and finish up this install. We're gonna, I think we're going to try to fire this thing up. So okay. So the next thing we have our LCD for our our selection, our game selection. This is our control panel for the CPS2 game. So it comes with the um, comes with a case comes with the case so uh, to protect it's like a protection case for your for your LCD um, and it gives you mounting options inside of your cabinet so let's pop that guy in and I don't really want to take off that pro screen protection quite yet all right so let's put him in it feels like it's seated all the way Looks like it's got a ridge. It's going to sandwich that in when we pop it together. Okay. Yeah, nice and snug. So it looks like you got down, up, and enter. And then what is this guy? So it comes with another piece. I'm going to have to look. Ah, this is an... Is that an... Oh, Alternate back, maybe? Oh, no, I see, okay. So at the bottom you have some tabs so you can, yeah, that's for your mounting. Yeah, that's pretty slick. All right, boom, that's an extra charge. Okay, so it comes with the, I got the extended ribbon cable, so hopefully if I get it inside of a cabinet, you can run this like to maybe behind the coin door or somewhere easily acceptable. All right, so let's check our, our pinouts again. Ah, do you see I got, we're hooked up to the A board, guys. That means we're getting close. I'm kind of nervous because that that B board, I don't know if it even works. So if it doesn't work, I'm either going to have to fix that B board or try another one of my suicided A boards. Okay, so they had a key. I checked the pins, all that. So... That's it, really, for the install. That's super easy, to be honest. Now, for the games. Um, I'm going to do a separate video. I'm going to do a separate video for the game packs and the SD card and setting all that up. I hope I did this right. Out online, you can find the CPS uh, ROM packs. I think you can download... You, you can get the ROMs a la carte... And put them on your SD card, or they have uh, packs with all of them. They have packs with the hacks. Um, there's a couple different ones out there. So I basically got a encrypted. This is all an encrypted ROM set. All games, like all 42 games, no hacks. And I hopefully I got a directory of games, and then inside the games directory is a list of all the games. So I don't I don't even know if this is correct yet, but it has an SD card slot here, and we're gonna insert that guy. Oh, that's nice. It's a clicker kind. Okay, clicks in, clicks out. Okay, guys, moment of truth. I don't think we need to mess around. Let's let's warm up the the CRTs here. I know my test setup is good. I've ran some good boards off of here. So let's jam a, let's jam a up. I'm gonna wait till I have this warmed up so if it glitches out, I can see if it's still a, a death screen. Okay, let's keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> fingers crossed. I think everything is okay. Power, cables, everything's seated. All right, let's do it. Damn it, man. That is the screen of death from the b-board so um but so on our lcd it is coming up with the first 
Ah, okay. So here's, um, if you can zoom in here. So I know my SD card loaded correctly because it's reading the games in order. Got the 19, 19 um, series. Let's go. Yeah, that's okay. Got down and up. Battle circuits, alien versus predator. Um, let's hit enter. Oh, uh oh, look, something happened. It's trying to run. Come on, baby. Flash writing. Oh, it's writing. It may work, guys. Woo! Flash writing. So what it's doing is writing the gaming program. Now is feeding it down into through the program banks nope all done have fun so we got problems with this b board not a big deal i know the kit works well kind of a big deal right so it is trying to work hang on a second here i'm going to grab my controller Okay, I don't know where my controller is. Oh, it's right there. Yeah, so we have problems with that B board. It, it, I don't know. I bought it not working, thinking it was suicided. So I'm gonna go away, do some troubleshooting. So the game, the game loaded. The game loaded. Yeah, it's it's not doing anything. I'm gonna have to go and do some troubleshooting. Maybe a power gal. Maybe one of these pal chips is not good. So, yeah, that's unfortunate. Let's, um, let's power cycle and do that again. All right, so we get the screen of death. Oh, even when we power cycled, it remembers the last game you were on. That's kind of cool. Let's, um, let's try one of these 1940 games. 1944. Let's try that game. Enter. It is trying to write. It is definitely trying to load. Okay. Flash writing. So it's writing in. Yeah, you know, it, it's hard to say. There's no physical damage on that board. Maybe one of the chips are bad. Maybe maybe somebody messed with the... Um, there is that jumper on the bottom. So we're just going to have to take a look. I think there's a troubleshooting section in... Um, High score saves. All right, so let's watch what happens. Um, it's trying to load. It sure is. So, hey, it is it is what it is. It was a gamble with this board. I'm going to have to choose another one and, and try another board. Okay, guys, so that's it for tonight. I'm going to go do some troubleshooting. We'll come back when I figure something out. Thanks for watching. Okay, hey, guys, me, Keith, Elder Rock, back. Um, following up from last night's initial install of the Darksoft kit, the CPS2 Darksoft kit. So last night, so I've been working all afternoon, so I worked all afternoon on this thing, and I'm going to go over some troubleshooting things. Sorry it's not on film, but at least I can talk you through it. If um, I'll put it in the, in the description of the video, so hopefully you land here if you have any of the same problems. So last night, after I installed the Darksoft kit, a lot of the games would not boot. They would freeze on boot, and it would just kick back to a solid color screen. Okay, so some of the games would boot. Okay, so I could be crazy, but I don't think I am. Okay, so let's let's come in here a little bit closer on the board, and I'm going to come in here with my pointer. Um, remember yesterday, I think I showed you the ROM sockets, the original ROM sockets underneath this main board. They were uh, they were blackened pretty good. The pins were blackened, and then when I saw what was going on here, on a, on a normal board, I would think same thing: um, bad ROMs, dirty sockets, or bad CPU. I was thinking the CPU was good. I was hoping the CPU was good. Um, the ROMs the ROMs generate from this processing board and across to the main board here and on from the software on the SD card. So knowing that the software more or less is not corrupt, um, then you're kind of looking at interface problems, that being bad sockets, 
and really just going back to the basics, right? Bent pins, bent pins on your dark soft kit, bad sockets on your board. So what I did today, I I dismantled everything. I took the I took the the jumper cable off, the processing board off, and the main board off. So I spent some time cleaning these sockets. Um, on a normal board, I would just replace them. But there would there's eight eight forty pin sockets here, and I and I, I wanted to try cleaning them. I don't usually clean them, but I went for it. So because um, the only pins that are populated are your output pins here. And you have the the complete first row of input pins, and then you have on the other four. Oh well. You have your chip select and your and your voltage pin. So only two pins on the four, complete row plus yeah, complete two rows on your output, and then your input, you have your input plus your plus your voltage and chip select. So I went through and cleaned them the best I could. I and to be honest, they were they, they were tarnished over. They were black pretty good. So I went through with um, how I cleaned them. Um, I used my pick. I used this guy. I used this guy and the sharp, the sharp one. I used a little bit of contact cleaner and my IPA. And I just got down in there. And I have a small brass brush. And I got down there and cleaned them. Visually to me, I, I wasn't super happy. Like, oh yeah, those cleaned up great. They cleaned up okay at best but i know i was down to the metal i think the corrosion um has already got through the plating but hopefully kind of neutralized what was there and got it down to the metal okay so after that i re reseated the main board or yeah the main the main board make sure it was all the way seated i come back on the main processor board same thing seated it you look at the gap on your connector and then on the uh, extender board, extender card. And one thing to note, I, I can't say for sure if this was a problem, but I'm, I'm just gonna talk about it because I think it's a problem. This interface card, I think I showed it on the video last night, it had heavy flux on it. Both, both of these connector on the solder side were heavy flux all the way across, all the way across. Same thing with this main board. The the solder side of the connector of the pins all had heavy flux. And I will argue, I will debate with anybody about flux creating a short. Is it possible it can create a full on short? Not really, but you can, you can have real low resistance through the flux pin to pin. So anyway, I cleaned all of that flux back off when I reseated everything. Okay, so reseated the game. Huh. Okay, so I reseated the game. Ah, and also before I reseated the game, we lost sound. So there was no sound. Booting to a solid color screen. I had jail bars. And it would boot to um, either solid black or the blue or the purple. So... Even in the troubleshooting guide for this, it's just the same th theme. Sockets, bad sockets, broken pins, just the basics, right? Everything I we preach and check out first on any board that lands on the bench. Anyway, got it back all together, and apparently now, now it is working well. Okay, part two, because I wasn't sure about the encrypted ROMs and decrypted ROM set I had burned on my on my SD card. So I took this guy back out, I blew it away, and I put on the the uh, decrypted set. I put that in, decrypted set, works great, no problem. So I went back, I added in, I added in the encrypted set, all in one file. Everything seemed to be working okay. But the problem there is you have you have duplicates. You have many, many, many duplicates. And it all seems to be working. So I pulled it back out and I wiped it. I wiped my SD card again 
and I want with the uh, the newest the newest um, pack, the newest ROM pack that's available. So it's basically one of each one of each game, and most of them are English, except for the ones that were released only in Japan and whatnot. So now I've been through before I came on camera. I went through almost every game. There's like 50 games in that roll-up pack. And they're all loading perfectly and have sound. So I think that's why we're going to wrap up. Um, obviously, I have to put this back into the case. Um, and I might, I might, I'm going to definitely make some other videos. I have more, I have more CPS work to do. But the kit, this kit is finished. I'm happy with it. So since it's already a long video, let's just, let's just go through and look at some games. Okay. And I guess we can talk about how this guy works, how the um, how the menu works, and all of that. So come down here. Okay, so right now we're in game. So right now we're in game. So you have an up and down button to scroll down through the list of games. So 19, 1944, 19, oh, up. Let's go back. I want to start back at the beginning. Okay, this is the first game. So when you load in, it's going to be in alphabetical order on your screen. So um, you have this, and it will sometimes flash now playing Street Fighter, Super Street Fighter 2 X10. But it will tell you, like, equals J. That's the Japanese version. But anyway, if even if it comes down, you just start scrolling. 1944 U.S. version. 19xx US version uh, armored armored warriors European which would be English alien versus predator US version battle circuitry now if you want the Japanese version it's no problem you just you just put those in you just dump those in on here I think I'm gonna leave it like this I kind of like the list I don't like fighting games so I don't even want to see duplicates. So anyway, you just kind of scroll down. I like Dungeons and Dragons. I'm a, I'm a fantasy kind of guy. So if I if we want to load that one, Tower of Doom. So like yesterday, same program. This would not boot. So look up at the screen. So let me see. Can I get them both up in here? Yeah. So it's it's flashing. See how it's it's actually loading. Loading the game ROM. Keep the TV up in there, and then we'll, then they can see what happens. And then after it loads up, all right, boom. There's your game. Okay, and like. Welcome to the D and D world. Welcome to the D and D world. We have all of our sounds. No sound problems. So another thing that was happening with the bad connections, it would load up and, and freeze. It would load up and, and just freeze, and that would be it. So, okay, so let's um, let's go down, pick another game, and kind of show you uh, Darkstalkers. Oh, Gigawing, US, boom. And their, their flying games are really great. The 1944 games, Gigawings, just some really good games. I don't like fighter games, but, um, okay, oops, sorry. Yep, so it's going to be flashing, it's writing the program ROMs in to the processing board, and then it will, then it will boot, boom, see that? You got kind of checkered boot screen, then it loads, so fantastic, that's good. All right, let's do another one. Uh, let me see. Mars Matrix is pretty... Mars Matrix is actually pretty cool. Marvel Superheroes. Let's do that one. I'll do that one for the... You, you fighting guys. Okay, anyway, so... Yep. See the flashes? The flashes writing. And I also know it's going good because what we'll do... We're going to power it off. And it has a memory of the game that you played last. And before, yesterday when it was working intermittent, it would not load the last game, even if it was working, even if it had loaded. So, I'm going to set that guy boot up. Boom. See, you got 
some checkered screen, and then goes into the game. Okay. Uh, what game is this? This is Super Street Fighter? A Marvel Superheroes. Oh, okay. So there's like Spider-Man and all those games. That could probably be fun. Okay, so let's let's power cycle it. We're just gonna shut it off. We're gonna power down. We're gonna power down. Um, I suppose we don't have to wait too long. It's gonna hold whatever. So hopefully it'll make a liar out of me. Boom. See, and it comes right back up on the last game. So I'm pretty happy with the way this is going. I say if, if you're doing troubleshooting on these boards, and there's a troubleshooting guide at the bottom of the install, and it's pretty, it's pretty accurate. And the common theme, okay, booting to a solid color screen, bad connections. Booting to white screen, bad connections. Booting to jail bar, jail bar lines, bad connections. Um... If you, I, I would say start there. If you're having any of those issues, I, I would do what I did. I would pull those. Just do your basic. Make sure that your that your program ROM ROM sockets and those banks are totally clean, as clean as they can be. Check for any fog. Let's come back down here closer. As uh, I did inspect again. I did it inspect again. If you come down here close in, on these icy legs, I did find a piece of solder ball. I found a piece of solder ball just laying on one of the uh, in between two legs. I, I plucked it out. Um, you got to look for all of that kind of stuff. Inspect your board. Inspect the cleanliness of your sockets. I actually reseeded uh, the pow chips or those gals. Yeah, the pow chips and. I, and I, that fixed it for me at least. And I think I'm about ready to wrap up. So that's going to end the Dark Soft install kit. And I thought it was going to take a lot longer, but, you know, there's other videos out there that are like 10 or 15 minutes long. But, you know, this is Arcade Laboratories. We're looking at things, the electronics, kind of teaching and learning. Like, you know, anything that comes on the bench, you should inspect. Just don't take for granted anything is good. Your cables, your connectors, FOD, um, any of that. Even, you know, my 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 own built cables I get skeptical of. Are, are they going bad? Did I get a loose connection? So just, just go with the basics. Take your time. Inspect everything. Ask for help. I even ask for help. I don't like to ask for help, I'll admit. But... You guys out there who I, I bug, like the, the, the guys that are really good and experienced, I hate to bother you guys, but I ask for help sometimes. I'll try to learn myself. Um, if you have any questions about the, the software, the ROM packs, leave me a, leave me a comment below. I'm, I'm not sure how the whole, um, eh, it's not piracy, but, you know, we, we want to give our, um, what do you call it? Credit, you know, to the people who are doing this stuff. And I, I, you know, if you have questions about the software, let me know. We'll go from there. It is out there online. A little bit of research, you can kind of get what you need. So hey, leave leave a like or subscribe. I'm really happy about this one. Uh, this is going to go home into a NBA Jam cabinet. It's going to be a pretty cool cabinet, I think. Hit like and subscribe. Thank you guys. If you want to hear anything more or less, I appreciate it. And psh, I'm out. Keith out. Elder Rock out.